long as humanity itself. They are a fundamental part of our nature. From the earliest days, people have used games to entertain themselves, learn new skills, and connect with each other. The earliest games were often based on simple physical challenges or tests of skill, such as running, jumping, or throwing. Over time, these simple games evolved into more complex forms of entertainment. Early civilizations developed board games, card games, and other types of puzzles that challenged the mind as well as the body. These games were often used as a way to teach children important skills, such as strategy, logic, and problem solving. They also served as a form of social bonding, bringing people together for shared experiences and friendly competition. One of the earliest known board games is Senet, which originated in ancient Egypt over 5,000 years ago. Senet was played on a board with 30 squares, and the goal was to be the first player to move all of their pieces off the board. The game was thought to have religious significance, and it was often played at funerals and other important ceremonies. Another ancient game, the Royal Game of Ur, was popular in Mesopotamia around 2600 BC. This game involved rolling dice and moving pieces around a board, and it is thought to be a precursor to modern backgammon. These early games provide a fascinating glimpse into the minds of our ancestors. They show us that the desire to play and compete is a universal human trait. They also demonstrate the importance of games as tools for learning, socialization, and cultural expression. As we explore the evolution of puzzles and games, we will see how these ancient forms of play have influenced modern gaming and continue to shape our world today. From the dusty plains of ancient Mesopotamia to the bustling marketplaces of the Roman Empire, games of strategy and chance were a ubiquitous part of life. People from all walks of life, from emperors to farmers, enjoyed testing their skills and wits against one another. Many of these ancient games involved simple materials like stones, bones, or pottery shards, yet they offered surprisingly complex and engaging gameplay. One such game was Patea, a popular pastime in ancient Greece. Patea was a game of military strategy, played on a grid-based board with pieces representing different types of soldiers. Players took turns moving their pieces, attempting to capture their opponent's forces and control key positions on the board. The game required careful planning, tactical thinking, and the ability to anticipate an opponent's moves, skills that were highly valued in ancient Greek society. Another popular game was Latrunculi, a Roman game of military tactics that shared similarities with Patea. Latrunculi was played on a rectangular board with pieces that represented different ranks of soldiers. The goal was to capture all of the opponent's pieces or to block them from making any further moves. Latrunculi was a favorite pastime of Roman soldiers who used it to hone their strategic thinking and prepare for real-life battles. These ancient games of strategy not only provided entertainment, but also served as valuable tools for developing critical thinking skills. By playing these games, people learned to analyze situations, plan ahead, and make decisions under pressure. The lessons learned from these games could be applied to other areas of life, such as warfare, politics, and business. The enduring popularity of these games is a testament to their timeless appeal and their ability to challenge and engage the human mind. The ancient Egyptians were avid game players, and their culture boasted a rich variety of board games, dice games, and other forms of entertainment. Games were seen as an integral part of Egyptian life, enjoyed by people of all ages and social classes. They were used for recreation, education, and even religious rituals. The elaborate tombs of Egyptian pharaohs often contained game boards and pieces, suggesting that games were believed to have an afterlife significance. Senet, as mentioned earlier, was perhaps the most famous of all ancient Egyptian games. It was played on a board with 30 squares, arranged in three rows of 10. The game involved moving pieces along the board according to the roll of dice or the throwing of sticks, and the first player to move all of their pieces off the board was declared the winner. Senate was not merely a game of chance, however. It was believed to have symbolic connections to the journey of the soul through the underworld, and successful play was thought to bring good fortune in the afterlife. Another popular Egyptian game was Mehen, named after the serpent god Mehen. Mehen was played on a circular board with a spiral track, and players moved their lion-shaped pieces around the board, 
attempting to capture their opponent's pieces. The game was known for its strategic complexity and its elegant design, reflecting the Egyptians' appreciation for both intellectual and aesthetic pursuits. The games of ancient Egypt offer a glimpse into the sophisticated culture and beliefs of this remarkable civilization. They demonstrate the Egyptians' love of entertainment, their fascination with the afterlife, and their belief in the power of games to connect the physical and spiritual realms. The enduring legacy of these games is evident in the continued popularity of board games and other forms of analog gaming today. The ancient civilizations of the Orient developed their own unique traditions of puzzles and games, many of which continue to be enjoyed today. From the intricate strategy of Go to the meditative beauty of Tangrams, these games reflect the cultural values and intellectual pursuits of their creators. The emphasis on logic, strategy, and contemplation is a hallmark of many Oriental games, offering players a chance to engage their minds and explore the depths of their own creativity. Go, also known as Weiki or Baduk, is an ancient board game that originated in China over 2,500 years ago. It is played on a grid-based board with black and white stones, and the goal is to surround more territory than one's opponent. Go is a game of profound strategic depth, requiring players to think many moves ahead and consider the long-term consequences of their actions. It is considered one of the most challenging games ever invented, and it remains popular throughout East Asia and beyond. Tangrams, on the other hand, offer a different kind of puzzle-solving experience. Tangrams are a dissection puzzle consisting of seven flat shapes called tans, which are traditionally cut from a square. The objective is to arrange the tans to form a specific design, using all seven pieces without any overlaps. Tangrams can be used to create an endless variety of shapes and figures, ranging from simple geometric forms to complex depictions of animals, people, and objects. These oriental puzzles and games offer a unique blend of intellectual stimulation and aesthetic appeal. They encourage players to develop their spatial reasoning, logical thinking, and creative problem-solving skills. The enduring popularity of these games is a testament to their timeless appeal and their ability to challenge and engage the human mind across cultures and generations. Section 5. Medieval Mastery, Chess and Beyond The medieval period witnessed a flourishing of games and puzzles, many of which emerged from the cultural crossroads of Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Chess a game of war waged on a checkered battlefield, rose to prominence during this era, captivating the minds of nobles and commoners alike. Its intricate rules and strategic depth made it a favorite pastime of intellectuals and military strategists, who saw in its movements echoes of real-life conflicts and power struggles. Chess, believed to have originated in India around the 6th century AD, spread rapidly throughout Persia, the Arab world, and eventually Europe. The game's evolution reflected the cultural influences it encountered along the way, with variations in rules and pieces emerging in different regions. By the 15th century, chess had become a widely popular pastime in Europe, with dedicated chess clubs and tournaments springing up in major cities. Beyond chess, other games flourished during the medieval period, reflecting the diverse interests and pastimes of the era. Backgammon, a game of dice and strategy, enjoyed widespread popularity, as did card games, which emerged in Europe around the 14th century. These games provided social outlets and opportunities for entertainment in a world where leisure time was often limited. The medieval period saw games and puzzles not only as sources of amusement, but also as tools for education and social commentary. Chess, with its intricate rules and strategic depth, became a metaphor for the complexities of warfare and political maneuvering. Moralistic games, such as the game of Goose, used allegorical imagery and symbolic pathways to teach players about virtue and vice. These games reflect the medieval worldview, where entertainment and instruction were often intertwined. Section 6. Renaissance of Games The Renaissance, a period of remarkable intellectual and artistic flourishing, saw a renewed interest in classical learning and a surge in creativity across Europe. This spirit of innovation extended to the realm of games and puzzles, which underwent a period of transformation and expansion. New games emerged, 
reflecting the changing social landscape and the growing fascination with exploration, discovery, and the human mind. Card games, which had gained popularity in the late medieval period, continued to evolve and diversify during the Renaissance. New card games, such as Primero and Taroki, emerged, offering players new challenges and opportunities for strategic thinking. Card decks themselves became works of art, with intricate designs and illustrations reflecting the artistic trends of the time. The Renaissance also witnessed the rise of trick-taking games, such as Trapola and Maw, which introduced new elements of bluffing and deception to card play. These games required players to carefully manage their hands, anticipate their opponent's moves, and employ cunning strategies to outwit their rivals. The popularity of trick-taking games reflected the growing emphasis on individualism and competition that characterized the Renaissance era. The Renaissance's spirit of inquiry and discovery led to the creation of new puzzles and brain teasers that challenged players' logic and problem-solving abilities. Mechanical puzzles, often made of wood or metal, presented intricate challenges involving gears, levers, and interlocking pieces. These puzzles, precursors to modern puzzle boxes and escape rooms, tested players' dexterity, spatial reasoning, and ability to decipher complex mechanisms. The Age of Enlightenment, a period of intellectual ferment and philosophical inquiry, brought about a shift in attitudes towards games and puzzles. While games continued to be valued for their entertainment and social aspects, they were also increasingly seen as tools for understanding probability, statistics, and the workings of the human mind. Games of chance, such as dice games and card games, provided fertile ground for exploring the nature of randomness and the mathematical principles that govern uncertain events. The development of probability theory during this era, pioneered by mathematicians such as Blaise Pascal and Pierre de Fermat, revolutionized the understanding of games of chance. By applying mathematical principles to games like dice rolling and coin tossing, these thinkers were able to calculate the likelihood of different outcomes and develop strategies for maximizing one's chances of winning. These insights had a profound impact on the way games were perceived and played. No longer seen as purely random events, games of chance became subjects of scientific inquiry, offering a window into the nature of uncertainty and the limits of human prediction. The study of games of chance also laid the groundwork for the development of statistics, a field that has had a transformative impact on numerous fields, from economics to medicine. The Enlightenment's emphasis on reason and rationality led to a growing interest in games that challenged the mind and encouraged logical thinking. Puzzles and brain teasers became increasingly popular, offering players opportunities to exercise their deductive reasoning skills and test their mental agility. The development of new types of puzzles, such as the classic 15 puzzle, reflected the era's fascination with problem solving and the pursuit of intellectual challenges. The Industrial Revolution, a period of unprecedented technological advancement and social change, transformed the world of games and puzzles in profound ways. The advent of mass production techniques and new printing technologies made it possible to manufacture and distribute games on a scale never before imagined. This led to a surge in the availability and affordability of games, making them accessible to a wider range of people than ever before. Board games, once the domain of the wealthy and elite, became a common sight in middle-class homes. Classic games like checkers, chess, and backgammon were mass-produced and sold at affordable prices, bringing these timeless pastimes to a new generation of players. The Industrial Revolution also saw the emergence of new types of board games, reflecting the changing social landscape and the growing fascination with themes of industry, transportation, and commerce. The development of lithography, a printing technique that allowed for the mass production of colorful images, revolutionized the design and aesthetics of games. Game boards became more visually appealing, with intricate illustrations and detailed graphics that enhanced the playing experience. Playing cards, once simple and utilitarian, were now adorned with elaborate designs and colorful characters, adding a new dimension of artistry to card games. The Industrial Revolution also brought about the rise of commercial game publishers, who played a key role in popularizing new games and distributing them to a global market. Companies like Parker Brothers and Milton Bradley emerged as major players in the game industry, 
shaping the future of gaming with their innovative designs and marketing strategies. The mass production and widespread availability of games solidified their place as a beloved form of entertainment and a fixture of modern life. The latter half of the 20th century witnessed a technological revolution that would fundamentally alter the landscape of gaming, the rise of digital technology. From the early days of arcade games to the immersive worlds of online multiplayer games, digital technology has opened up new frontiers for game developers and players alike, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in interactive entertainment. The advent of arcade games in the 1970s marked the beginning of a new era in gaming. Games like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Space Invaders captivated players with their simple yet addictive gameplay, colorful graphics, and innovative use of digital technology. Arcades became social hubs where people gathered to compete for high scores, share tips and tricks, and experience the thrill of immersive digital gameplay. The introduction of home video game consoles in the late 1970s and early 1980s brought digital gaming into the living room. Consoles like Atari, Nintendo, and Sega offered a wide variety of games, from action-packed adventures to brain-teasing puzzles, allowing players to enjoy digital gaming experiences in the comfort of their own homes. The evolution of home consoles with increasingly sophisticated graphics, sound, and gameplay fueled the rapid growth of the video game industry. The rise of the internet in the 1990s ushered in a new era of online gaming. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games, MMORPGs, such as EverQuest and Ultima Online, allowed players from around the world to connect and interact with each other in persistent virtual worlds. Online gaming fostered a sense of community among players who could collaborate on quests, compete in challenges, and form lasting friendships within these digital realms. The digital revolution has not only transformed gaming, but has also had a profound impact on social interactions, blurring the lines between the physical and digital worlds. The dawn of the 21st century brought with it a significant shift in the way we play games, thanks to the rise of mobile technology. The introduction of smartphones and tablets has revolutionized gaming, making it more accessible and portable than ever before. Mobile gaming has become a global phenomenon, breaking down barriers and reaching a wider audience than any other gaming platform in history. With the launch of Apple's App Store in 2008 and Google's Play Store shortly after, millions of games became available at our fingertips. Titles like Angry Birds, Candy Crush Saga, and Pokemon Go captivated players of all ages with their engaging gameplay, intuitive controls, and innovative use of touchscreen technology. These games not only provided entertainment, but also fostered social interaction through features like leaderboards, achievements, and in-game chat. Mobile games have also evolved to incorporate complex narratives and high-quality graphics, rivaling those of traditional console and PC games. Titles like Monument Valley, Genshin Impact, and PUBG Mobile have demonstrated that mobile gaming can offer rich, immersive experiences that appeal to hardcore gamers as well as casual players. The accessibility of mobile games has democratized gaming, allowing people from all walks of life to enjoy and participate in this form of entertainment. Whether it's a quick puzzle game during a commute or an epic RPG adventure at home, mobile gaming has something for everyone. As technology continues to advance, the future of mobile gaming looks incredibly promising. With the potential for augmented reality, cloud gaming, and 5G connectivity, mobile games will continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, offering new and exciting ways to play. Pause 3S. Join us next time as we explore how games are being used as powerful tools for change. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more fascinating insights into the world of gaming. Pause 3S. Text. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos. Background. A dynamic montage of various gaming scenes, arcade, console, mobile, and online gaming. Music. Upbeat, electronic, contemporary. As we stand at the cusp of a new era in gaming, the boundaries between games and reality are becoming increasingly blurred. Games are no longer merely a form of entertainment. They are evolving into powerful tools for education, social change, 
and personal growth. From serious games that address real-world challenges to augmented reality experiences that blend the physical and digital, the future of play holds immense potential to shape our world in positive ways. Games are increasingly being used as educational tools, engaging students in interactive learning experiences that make acquiring knowledge more fun and effective. Gamified learning platforms, educational video games, and virtual reality simulations provide immersive environments where students can explore historical events, conduct scientific experiments, and develop critical thinking skills in engaging and interactive ways. Games are also being harnessed to address social issues, promote empathy, and foster positive change. Serious games, designed with specific social or educational goals in mind, tackle topics such as climate change, poverty, and conflict resolution, raising awareness and prompting players to consider solutions to real-world challenges. Games that promote empathy and understanding across cultures help players step into the shoes of others, broadening their perspectives and fostering a sense of shared humanity. The future of play is bright, with games poised to play an even greater role in shaping our world. As technology continues to evolve, we can expect to see even more innovative and impactful uses of games in education, social change, and personal growth. The power of play to engage, inspire, and transform is only beginning to be fully realized, and the possibilities for the future are truly limitless.